Hi, is this Todd? It is. Hi, Todd. It's Harlan with Metal Temple. Hey, man. Uh, are you ready to do the interview? I am ready. Okay, let's get started then. Uh, so, I heard you state in your promo video for You'll Never Be One of Us that you've been wanting to write music like this since you were 14 years old. So, I wanted to know what happened before you recorded the album that allowed you as a musician to start sounding the way that you've always wanted to sound. You're misquoting me. I absolutely didn't say that. What I said was, I wanted this. I wanted nails to reflect the emotions that I felt when I was or when I was 15 years old. And um, it's not that I've been waiting to write music that sounded like that. And we don't even sound like really the bands I've been listening to when I was 15 years old. Um, so yeah. Oh, um, my apologies. No, it's all right. No need to apologize. But that's. Um, I, I think those are two separate things. Um, you know, when I was when I was uh, more getting into like uh, the more um, I want to say I want to say underground, but it's not really as underground. When, when you're 14, you know, and you're getting into punk and hardcore and shit, like you look at a band like Meyer Thread as like an underground band, which they certainly are. But I think um, you know when you're in your 20s and your 30s, and you think about underground bands, you don't necessarily think of bands like Meyer Thread or Discharge or Subhumans or anything like that. You think of more like much more obscure things that you've learned throughout the years you know what i'm saying yeah so like um you know when i was when i was 14 and 15 years old like subhumans and, and minor threats were like secrets like none of my none of my peers none of my people in school like knew what the fuck those were you know what i mean so the, to me they were like extremely underground <laughs> um but uh you know but looking back on it now that i'm in my 30s you know like Discharge and, and Meyer Threat and bands like Slayer even are like kind of like gateway entry level bands for somebody getting into punk rock. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily look at those as like super underground bands. So what I meant by that statement was that I wanted to um, start a band that um, that kind of um, was influenced and also um, kind of put out the emotions uh, that I felt when listening to those bands when I, when I was like a young teenager. Sure, sure, and I certainly think I can understand what you mean by that, how those bands are, like, entry-level, like you said. Yeah, I mean, and that's not even a bad term. A lot of people use that as a um, pejorative. Yeah. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't, like, I would never, like, I would never, like, tell someone that their music listening habits were entry-level mm. as a pejorative. Um, that's just fucked up, and that's just kind of fucking stupid and lame. Um, Agreed. You know, um, but like, but you know, like they're they're kind of gateway bands, and they are they are bands that like you know when you're starting your your voyage or your conquest into punk rock, um, those are kind of the first ones you hear. And um, I don't look at that as a bad thing. I look at that as a good thing. You know, like uh, there's a reason why you connect to those bands at such a young age. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they're they're kind of easier and to listen to. They're catchy and they're 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 hard. You know? Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I first heard about Nails on the Unsilent Death EP that came back in 2009, right? Yeah. 2010, okay. Um, so that was a extremely volatile release, and I wanted to ask if you thought that your volatility has altered in any way since that release for this new album. Uh, no. I don't, I don't know. Um... Uh... I don't think so. I mean, Nails has kind of morphed into something different than it was in 2010, but still has the same traits, you know? It's still it's still the same band, but, you know, I don't want to make Unsilent Death three times in a row. So you just kind of have to find other ways to, to do the same thing, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I noticed on the new album, on the song Savage Intolerance, which you have a music video for, is uh, it's it's one of the more metallic sounding songs on the album, and I wanted to ask what were some more uh, influences that you took for this record to kind of have that sound, and were you purposefully taking away from the the power violence and grindcore side of the songwriting? Oh man, I gotta disagree. I think there's more grindcore on this record than ever, than either on the past of our two. Um, of course, you know, that's a matter of opinion, and if you see it the other way, that's completely fine. But I, like, I, my impression is there's a lot more blasting on this record than our past two. Um, power violence, 
that I mean we that was something we were heavily influenced by on Silent Death. Um, and that influence has definitely waned a little bit throughout the years. Um, and as far as the metallic stuff, I just I've always been a fucking mark for Slayer and I wanted to kind of hone in on that a little bit more for this record. There's definitely a lot of Slayer style solos and guitar solos like that on the album, which is why I thought that unlike on Silent Death, there was a lot more of the really kind of expressive guitar solos on this new album. Yeah, the guitar solos and some of the riffing is definitely, uh, you know, the breakdown of that uh, Savage Iron song definitely has like some Slayer influenced guitar. Big time uh, Pantera influence I heard on that too. What's that? Oh, I don't know if you would agree with that, but I heard a big Pantera influence on as well. Uh, you know, not maybe subconsciously. Like Pantera's a band I definitely love a lot, and I've loved them a lot for ever since Vulgar Display of Power came out. But um, maybe I'm, I wouldn't reject it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but but it wasn't at the forefront of my mind when we wrote the tune. Now, um, how would you say your bandmates have contributed to the songwriting on um, on "You Will Never Be One of Us"? I know I know they're not with you at the moment, but if you could speak for them, well, how would you say that they've uh, contributed to the album? Uh, you know, they all have they have their tastes and music that they like, and I and uh, you know I, we we want to kind of can all contribute what we think we should do, you know. Um, John's definitely more like kind of like a punk minded person when it comes to uh, music and Taylor's more um, kind of into like metallic like uh, hardcore so uh, you know we try to try to express ourselves in the most way we can you know we're Nails has always been kind of like a, a, a melting pot of, of punk metal and hardcore so uh, we definitely all put our stamp on the, on the songs very cool uh, so I, I just got one last question for you and then we'll wrap this up um, if by any chance the future Todd Jones is out there listening to this, which I'm, I if, if you understand what I mean by the future Todd Jones, maybe a fan of yours who's maybe around uh, their early teenage years, if they really look up to you or admire you as a musician, say they're listening to this interview, what would you want to say to that person <clears throat> that uh, that would maybe be advice that you wish that you had gotten before you started? making music with nails oh my gosh um like i'm sure you had a ton of uh you know your heroes and and idols at that age and if if you were yeah i still do yeah um uh yeah i don't know man i mean it's a really hard thing to say um i've certainly made a lot of mistakes in the past 15 years um you know playing music um but I've always tried to be a self-aware person and kind of learn my mistakes and move forward. Um, I guess that's the that's the most best advice I could give somebody. Just try to be aware of what you do um, and, and 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 learn from your mistakes and, and don't uh, be so quick to point the finger at other people. You know, when, when something bad happens, kind of look internal and see what you could have done differently to maybe avoid a conflict and, and kind of move forward without... Um, you know, without making a mistake uh, in the future, I, I guess that, that's what I would say, man. And, and what would you say to the to the same kind of straw man, uh, imaginary figure, if they wanted to start a band themselves? Would you have any advice about trying to stay true with what they like and the ch- taste that really inspired them? Or yeah, don't 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 read into what anybody else says about um, the music you make or who you are as a person. Just. Uh, um, be completely blind to any sort of criticism and just continue to do what you want. Um, you know, what's, uh, what you think you want to do and what you feel in your heart. Um, you know, kind of sounds kind of corny and cheesy, but, um, you know, if I, if I listen to every, uh, every person who's ever said that, you know, anything disparaging about me, I, I definitely want to be playing music. Um, and playing music is something I, I, I like doing. So, uh, uh, I guess that's it. Okay. Uh, one quick question, just yes or no, is hardcore dead? Uh, well, that's a very um, that's a very um, generalized question. So to give a very generalized answer, no, it's definitely not dead. Okay. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you for your time. Have a great day, man. Right, man. Good luck with the you new too. album. It rocks. Oh, fuck yeah. Thanks, buddy. All right. Have a good one, man. You too. Later.